Today, we will use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events. According to the latest news from the British Sky News Network, on February 9th, the Arctic cold wave brought severe snowfall and rain to some parts of the UK. North Wales and Northwest Shropshire are under a yellow snow and ice warning, with the Met Office issuing guidance saying some rural communities may be temporarily cut off, while travel disruptions and power cuts are also possible. A yellow snow warning is in place for the southern Pennines, where up to 25 centimeters of snow could fall, and for much of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Heavy rain and flooding disrupted roads and railways. Britain is bracing for more snow and ice after heavy snow forced dozens of schools to close in parts of the country. Thank you for liking, leaving comments, subscribing and turning on the little bell, we will update every day. Roads in Buxton in the Peak District were covered with a layer of snow, which caused severe traffic disruptions and complete school closures in Wales, Yorkshire, Derbyshire, Staffordshire and Cumbria. Snowplows were sent out to clear roads in Woodhead Pass, near Dunford Bridge, South Yorkshire, with motorists urged to use caution behind the wheel. North Wales Police reported serious traffic accidents as a result of the continued bad weather, with rural areas in Denbyshire, Flintshire and Wrexham particularly badly affected. In recent years, blizzard weather has occurred frequently all over the world, and the reasons are complex. First, climate warming causes seawater temperatures near the poles to continue to rise allowing the oceans to release more water vapor into the atmosphere. Water vapor is an important substance in the formation of precipitation, and increased water vapor provides more raw materials for the formation of heavy snow. Especially after entering winter, water vapor near the Arctic and Antarctic moves southward and northward with polar air masses. Once a suitable weather system is encountered, large-scale snowfall will occur. Secondly, global warming has weakened the polar insulation effect, making it easier for cold polar air to move to mid and low latitudes and collide with warm and humid air, contributing to precipitation and snowfall in mid-latitudes. Simulation studies show that if sea ice continues to shrink, the frequency of polar cold air overflow will further increase in the future, and blizzards in North America and Asia may become more frequent. At the same time, the reduction of rivers, lakes and seas has also affected the regional climate pattern to a certain extent, reducing the fixation of tropospheric water vapor and increasing the availability of water vapor in mid-latitudes, which is also conducive to the formation of heavy snowfalls. In addition, the reduction of forest cover makes it easier for the surface to release heat, which also makes the development of convective clouds more vigorous. More importantly, the El Nino and La Nina phenomena caused by global warming have intensified, making extreme weather events more frequent and intense. The latest research by some scientists shows that under climate warming, the water vapor content in the atmosphere increases, and the updrafts and downdrafts in blizzard cloud systems will become stronger, so the amount of snowfall that a single blizzard can produce will be greater. This has led to periods of high incidence of extreme snowstorms in many regions around the world. What cannot be ignored is that global warming will increase the probability of sudden warming in the Arctic stratosphere. In this case, the polar vortex will be disrupted, triggering large-scale cold wave weather in the mid to high latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere. Multiple Arctic warming events in recent years have been followed by large-scale extreme cold events in Eurasia. Therefore, it can be said that climate warming itself provides the dynamic and thermodynamic conditions for the formation of heavy snowfall weather. 
In addition, there is evidence that the increase in aerosols also affects the formation process of cloud particles, making it easier for snowflakes and ice crystals to aggregate and grow. These additional aerosol particles in clouds may come from human activities, such as pollutants produced by the burning of fossil fuels. Therefore, human factors have played a certain role in promoting the increase in blizzard incidents. This remains to be confirmed by further research. Therefore, climate warming and human activities have changed the balance of the global climate system, making it easier for extreme weather to form. According to the Comprehensive Information Record of the United Nations United Nations Environment Program, in recent decades, the Earth has experienced abnormal temperature warming compared to the past 10,000 years. Specifically, over the past 10,000 years, the global average temperature has been relatively stable, fluctuating between 14 and 15 degrees Celsius. After entering the industrialization era, the Earth began to experience a continuous warming trend due to the large-scale burning of fossil fuels and the emission of greenhouse gases. The average temperature at the end of the 19th century was about 15 degrees Celsius. By the mid-1980s, it had risen to 15.4 degrees Celsius. It continued to increase at a rate of 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade for more than 30 years. The current global average temperature has reached 15.9 degrees. Secondly, compared with the average of the past 10,000 years, the current global temperature is at least nearly 1 degree Celsius higher. 1 degree Celsius may not seem like much, but it is already having irreversible impacts on polar ice caps, sea levels, and many species of life. If strong emission reduction policies are not adopted, the world will be 3 to 5 degrees Celsius warmer by the end of this century. This will seriously threaten the survival of human civilization. It is worth mentioning that conclusive evidence of rising temperatures comes from weather observation stations around the world. Surface air temperature data recorded by these weather stations over the past 150 years confirms the ongoing warming trend. Echoing the evidence from direct temperature observations, proxy climate indicators from ice cores, tree rings, corals, sediments, etc. also replicate the unique pattern of temperature increase in modern times. It can be said that this is the most abundant and accurate record of climate change data in human history. At the same time, model analysis further confirms that the warming detected in the past century cannot be driven by natural causes. Without the influence of man-made greenhouse gases, computer models cannot replicate the actual observed warming trends. It is the increase in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that changes the balance of incident and reflected solar energy in the atmosphere, causing global warming. It should be noted that the climate system has strong inertia and inherent variability. The temperature does not change linearly, but slowly increases in the form of fluctuations. The severity of global warming does not depend on how high the temperature is in a certain year or region, but on long-term trends. Even in the context of warming, localized cooling will still occur in individual regions and periods. It is important to recognize the overall warming trend based on a large body of evidence. Faced with this severe challenge that human civilization has never faced before, the international community must transcend differences, unite and cooperate, reduce emissions on a large scale, and transition to a zero-carbon development path as soon as possible. At the same time, we must strengthen adaptive capacity building, help disadvantaged countries and groups, reduce the impact of climate change, and move toward a more equitable and just low-carbon future. 
In fact, the formation of blizzard weather usually requires the influence of several comprehensive conditions. First of all, in terms of weather systems, blizzard weather often occurs when there is an obvious frontal system passing by or under the influence of blocking low pressure. Because during these weather processes, the upward movement of air is strong, which is conducive to the development of convergence zones and cloud clusters. The front provides the primary moment for the blizzard, and the low-pressure area transports warm and moist air to the cold air through the large-span central warm circulation, which also stimulates the upward movement along the front, allowing the blizzard cloud system to grow rapidly. Secondly, water vapor conditions are an important material basis for the formation of heavy snow. As mentioned before, the cutting of warm and humid air by cold air is an important process in which water vapor condenses and releases heat to form forced convection. Therefore, blizzard weather often occurs over warm oceans or lakes where water vapor resources are abundant. An increase in water temperature will also increase the amount of water vapor the air can hold. In recent years, the global warming trend has caused the total amount of water vapor in the atmosphere to increase, which has created better conditions for the occurrence of heavy snowfalls. What cannot be ignored is that strong upward motion can quickly condense water vapor to form precipitation, which is a key factor in the release of heavy snow. Generally speaking, the lift in the frontal system and the spiral lift in the low pressure area can provide a continuous and stable updraft to maintain the development of the cloud system. Terrain uplift and tropospheric convergence lines often enhance vertical movement in heavy snow areas. All these updrafts add up to quickly condense and release sufficient water vapor in the snow. What needs to be emphasized is that the combined effect of the above conditions will result in positive feedback during the blizzard process. A large amount of snowfall will release condensation heat, reducing the stability of the cloud tops, which is conducive to continued convection. Snow cover also enhances the albedo of the surface, causing the surface temperature to further drop, which in turn is conducive to the maintenance of large-scale precipitation clouds. Therefore, once a blizzard forms, it will often add insult to injury and lead to serious meteorological disasters, which requires sufficient attention. The most intuitive damage caused by the snowstorm is that it will continue to have a huge impact on traffic. First, the concept of snowstorm needs to be clearly defined. According to quantitative standards in meteorology, extreme weather phenomena with wind speeds above 8 meters per second and accompanied by large amounts of snow are collectively called blizzards. It often poses serious threats to road, railway, and even air transportation. Secondly, for highway transportation, Snowstorms accumulate snow on both sides of the road and on vehicles to form a snow ridge effect. At the same time, huge wind speeds will cause the originally flat snow to form special shaped shrinkage grooves, changing the shape of the entire road surface and affecting the driving of vehicles. Serious adverse effects on control and steering stability. Statistics show that the incidence of traffic accidents during snowstorms is at least three times higher than usual. In addition, the large amount of snowfall brought by the blizzard will block the highway. An average snowfall of 5 cm per hour is enough to cause serious obstacles to traffic. Strong winds with a wind speed of 15 meters slash second will produce 30 to 50 centimeters of snow thickness within a few hours, completely interrupting highway traffic. Even with rapid cleaning, it is expected to take more than six hours to basically restore one-way traffic. This poses severe challenges to the city's basic operations and emergency response plans. 
At the same time, in terms of railway transportation, due to the huge wind resistance area of the train itself, excessive wind speed will also bring adverse factors to the operational stability. The intensity of wind-borne snow is comparable to that of hurricanes, which will seriously weaken or even destroy the normal operation of rail traffic signaling systems, increasing the possibility of derailments and collisions. In addition, a large amount of snow affects the adhesion relationship between the locomotive wheels and the rails, causing the loss of climbing performance to occur from time to time. What is more noteworthy is that for air transportation, a sharp decrease in visibility is the primary serious threat. When the wind speed is 15 meters per second, visibility often quickly drops from one kilometer to less than 200 meters, exceeding the safety red line for aircraft takeoff and landing. Even on the runway, it is difficult for the aircraft to ensure directional control and operational safety. Heavy snowfall will also quickly cover runways and signs, making it impossible to provide accurate navigation and positioning information for aircraft. Under extreme weather conditions, the aircraft needs to shut down the engine and all external systems and rely independently on the backup battery to maintain the most basic operation to deal with the risk of long-term metal icing. Many serious flight accidents have occurred under such conditions. If you are trapped by a snowstorm while walking, you need to take timely self-rescue methods. The first thing is to find shelter as quickly as possible. When a snowstorm suddenly strikes, quickly find a place where you can temporarily take shelter from wind and snow, such as dense woods, behind rocks, roadside caves, under bridges, etc. These places provide temporary protection from strong winds and blizzards. Secondly, use clothing and natural materials to insulate and keep warm. You can use the clothes, papers, branches and other materials you carry with you to build a simple windproof barrier in the shelter to seal up the surroundings of the body. Multiple layers of clothing can keep the body warm, and curling up can also reduce the loss of body heat from the body surface area. In addition, keep your body active to generate heat. It is necessary to move the limbs and trunk appropriately to help the body heat up. You can first do some simple exercises, such as waving your arms, kicking your legs, swinging your body, etc. to speed up blood flow and temporarily increase your body temperature. But don't exercise too much to consume your energy. What cannot be ignored is finding fuel to light a fire to keep warm. Making a fire using twigs, fallen leaves and other fuel that can be collected around the shelter will keep people warm. Use caution, control the fire, and consider smoke emissions. Also avoid burns and fire accidents when lighting a fire. At the same time, actively call for help and inform the location. During the survival period, you should try your best to send rescue information through mobile phones, etc., and inform rescuers of your approximate location. And try to make yourself more visible in the snow by moving slightly. More importantly, maintain positive thinking and confidence. When you feel panic or despair, you should supplement it with a positive inner monologue, believe that rescue is coming, and persevere, this is very important to maintain physical and mental health. What must be mentioned is the need to help other trapped people to keep warm. If multiple people are stuck together, they can snuggle together for warmth and take turns sleeping or going out to scout. This encourages each other and maximizes chances of survival. In order to cope with blizzard weather, some new technologies have emerged or have been stepped up research and development. The first is the application upgrade of high-precision weather forecast technology.
Currently, cloud computing and big data technology are being actively used to build a multi-level, complete element, process dimensional numerical forecasting system. From global scale climate change trends to regional scale nowcasting, a seamless connection in time and space has been achieved. Errors in observation and propagation are masked, and more accurate predictions can be made about the generation, duration, and movement direction of snowstorms. This provides reliable support for the Disaster Prevention Department's decision-making. Second is the development of traffic control and guidance technology. High-definition video images are used to identify traffic density and movement trends, and AI intelligent analysis determines traffic conditions to achieve active guidance and control, such as automatically setting signs to prompt speed limits. Traffic lights at important intersections can automatically adjust the green light duration according to traffic flow. Some road sections can be controlled remotely implement odd and even number restrictions. The vehicle itself can also receive instructions to automatically drive to slow down and stop. This ensures traffic safety under snowstorms. In addition, it is the popularization of wind and snow protection technology for building structures. Use high-quality steel to increase joint strength and reduce cross-section. Rationally design the roof inclination angle and use flange partitions to reduce wind and snow accumulation. Real-time monitoring of roof load bearing and displacement and remote analysis of structural safety. These technical means make the building stable against wind and snow loads and ensure safe use. More importantly, the wind and snow protection technology of power grids and pipe networks has been further strengthened. Before the arrival of wind and snow, the controllable compressor increases the pressure in the pipeline to reduce the risk of rupture. Wires and poles can be remotely heated to prevent freezing. The operating current of the line is detected in real time and can be quickly disconnected and reconnected in response to abnormal conditions. Power distribution terminals can be deployed in real time according to the load to ensure that important power consumption, such as heating and lighting, is not interrupted. The self-healing capabilities of the power and pipeline network against wind and snow have been enhanced. What cannot be ignored is the improvement of road snow removal technology. The development and application of high-efficiency snowmelting salts and anti-freeze and anti-slip agents can quickly and effectively break down snow and ice on the road. The new rubber track snow removal vehicle improves mobility and snow removal efficiency. The research and development of a multifunctional automatic snow removal vehicle with integrated shoveling and transportation can prevent and remove snow remotely, especially suitable for airport runway snow removal. These ensure the safety of key traffic arteries in extreme weather conditions. Thank you for liking, leaving a message, subscribing and turning on the little bell. We will update the latest news from around the world every day. Continue to use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events.